Menopause can do a lot of things to your life. Hot flashes, night sweats, mood swings, increased sugar cravings, low libido, and weight gain. And that weight gain usually doesn't show up as muscle either, but body fat. And that body fat likes to park itself through your belly area through menopause and beyond. You might be here because your clothes aren't fitting you the way that they used to, or because you just wanna feel like your old self again, the way that you felt in your body before menopause. Or maybe you're concerned about how all of these changes, especially the weight gain, will impact your health in the years to come. All good reasons to be watching this. I wanna help you get more comfortable in understanding what's going on with that amazing body of yours and what you can do to get rid of some of the unhealthy body fat that your body has started to hold onto. In case we haven't met, my name is Tracy D. Mitchell. I'm a board certified Mayo Clinic health and wellness coach, and I'm the author of the book, The Belly Burn Plan. I hold a master's degree in health and nutrition education, and for the last 20 years, I have been helping women like you live their healthiest lives. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get regular video updates, each created with your health in mind. So one of the phrases that my clients often use when we start working together is out of control. They just feel out of control. They feel like they don't have control of their bodies anymore, no matter what they eat or how they move. And I get it. It really can seem like you have very little control over your body when hormones are shifting so rapidly, but you do. You have more control than you think. In this video, I'm going to explain two very important subjects related to weight gain through menopause and the types of foods that you eat. Both will explain what happens through menopause, how things change on a hormone level, and why the foods you eat can make this hormonal shift better or worse. A big thing to remember though, is that your experiences are not going to be identical to a friend or family members who is also going through menopause. There are certainly going to be many similarities, but because your body is unique to you, your experiences are going to be unique as well. Because I wanna remain as respectful as possible of your time, I've broken this video down into chapters so you can just jump to the section that's most important to you. Those chapters can be found in the video description below. The first subject is how your body's relationship with insulin changes with shifting estrogen levels and how this creates more belly fat, and then what you can do about it. I wanna start here because it's usually one of the first things that women begin to notice. That fat that suddenly starts moving to the belly area when it was never really there before, at least not as much. Or maybe that fat that was parked around your hips and thighs has suddenly started migrating north through menopause. To understand this is to understand what's happening with estrogen. Estrogen in the form of estradiol is the hormone that your ovaries release up until menopause. As you begin your transition, your ovaries produce less and less of this important hormone. Up until that point, estrogen has been helping your body maintain more steady blood sugar levels. It just so happens to be that this hormone buffers blood sugar levels, which helps to make insulin's job much more effective. Insulin's job is to regulate your blood sugar levels. Estrogen and insulin like to work together. Before menopause, estrogen helps your blood vessel cells move insulin to your muscles, which in turn reduces blood sugar levels. After menopause, without as much estrogen available, insulin is simply less effective than it used to be. When insulin is less effective, the sugar that's in your blood gets moved to the fat cells in your body and preferably your belly area instead of your muscle cells, which is why we women often see an increase in belly fat through menopause. So how can you manage this? Well, the answer is definitely not to crash diet, to overexercise, to follow some protocol that promises fast weight loss or to spend your days counting calories. Please don't do that. An important first step is to simply pump the brakes on excess added sugar in the foods that you eat and the beverages you drink. I'm not talking about fruits. I'm not talking about vegetables. I'm talking about the more obvious culprits like soda, juice, coffee drinks, pastries, sugar sweetened yogurts, candy, desserts. You get the point. Curbing added sugars alone, doing just this one thing will help insulin, which in turn will help you keep belly fat off your body. Regardless of whether or not you're on HRT, curbing added sugar will help keep this belly fat at bay. And it's all about making insulin work less overtime and keeping your hormones in a more harmonious state. Now, if you're puzzled about what has added sugar and what doesn't, the easiest way to figure this out is to look at the nutrition facts on the food products that you're eating. Underneath carbohydrate is a subcategory called added sugar. It's this added sugar that you wanna become more aware of. So how much is too much added sugar? Well, if you're getting nutrients from fruits and vegetables, you really don't need to add any added sugar, but the American Heart Association recommends that we women limit our intake of added sugar to about 24 grams or roughly six teaspoons. I keep using the word added, you've probably noticed that. Total sugars and added sugars are a little bit different. 
Added sugars simply reflect the amount of sugar that's been added to a product to make it taste sweeter. Many foods have naturally occurring sugars in them. For the time being, let's just focus on curbing those added sugars. For perspective, many fruit flavored yogurts or yogurt smoothies contain over a dozen grams of added sugar. Popular sugar sweetened coffee drinks contain well over 30 grams of added sugars, as do most sodas. And unsuspecting foods such as salad dressings and sauces contain small amounts of added sugar too, which can really add up. The bottom line, because estrogen isn't as abundant after menopause, your body's ability to use sugar the way that it once did changes significantly, which affects how insulin works. The best thing you can do is to cut back or cut out added sugars. It's a great place to start. Doing this one thing alone will make a big difference. So let's move on. Something else that changes as we go on this hormonal roller coaster is our body's ability to manage inflammation. As if menopause isn't enough of a gift that just keeps on giving, the connection between increased inflammation and menopause is real. To be clear, I'm referring to chronic inflammation, not acute inflammation, not that paper cut on your finger, rather chronic inflammation, which is the type that lingers oftentimes at low levels in our bodies, potentially wreaking havoc on all of our systems and increasing body fat. I'm going to explain why body fat increases with inflammation and what you can do about it in just a moment, but I wanna briefly explain why this happens in the first place so you can make sense of it. Now, I already explained that estrogen does a great job buffering blood sugars, but estrogen also has a really potent anti-inflammatory effect on our body too. Before menopause, estrogen acts like a shield, helping to keep inflammation levels low and protect your body. It regulates the immune system and keeps harmful substances like inflammatory chemicals released from your body fat under control. When estrogen levels drop during menopause, that shield weakens and the body becomes much more prone to inflammation. At the same time, and largely thanks to blood sugar levels being dysregulated, menopausal bodies often store more body fat, specifically visceral fat, which releases substances that increase inflammation too. You heard that right. Visceral belly fat releases substances called cytokines that increase inflammation. It can become a real and dangerous negative feedback loop. So inflammation itself both increases belly fat and makes it harder to lose it. This might also cause issues like joint pain, fatigue, or even raise the risk of heart disease and other health problems. So before menopause, estrogen helps to keep things calm and balanced, but then through menopause and after menopause, the body shifts to more of an inflamed state. It sounds pretty doom and gloom, doesn't it? Well, you can do a lot to help reverse both inflammation and belly fat through the foods that you're eating. I hope you're already on board with eating less added sugar. Added sugars are in fact inflammatory and eating less of them will help you turn off those inflammatory signals. In addition to that, focus on eating more anti-inflammatory foods in general. I'll include a link in the description below that will help give you some guidance in this area. I know it's not always easy to figure out, but since you're already on the detective path by paying closer attention to labels with eating less added sugars, here's one more thing I want you to keep an eye out for on those labels that's very inflammatory processed vegetable oils. Processed vegetable oils include oils like corn, sunflower, and soybean oils, and are added to a lot of shelf-stable ultra-processed foods. These oils are often thought of as healthy because they're unsaturated, but they can actually be quite inflammatory. Now, I'm not saying that all unsaturated fats are bad. In fact, most are very good. But by simply cutting out these processed vegetable oils, you're naturally going to eat far fewer ultra-processed foods, which will further help you reduce inflammation. A big reason these oils are so unhealthy is because they go through heavy processing, which often involves using chemicals and very high heat. This changes the structure of the oil, stripping away many of the natural nutrients and creating unhealthy compounds that can be hard on your body. Second, these oils are really high in something called omega-6 fatty acids. Most people are getting way too many of them, especially from processed foods. When omega-6s are out of balance with another important fatty acid called omega-3s, the fat that we get from foods like fish or flax seeds, they can trigger inflammation in the body. So when you cook with or eat foods that contain a lot of these oils, you're feeding your body a steady supply of the fats that actually promote inflammation. Over time, this inflammation can lead to problems that I mentioned earlier, joint pain, heart disease, then you add that thick layer of menopause on top of all of it and boom, your health starts taking a massive hit. That's why it's a good idea to use healthier fats like olive oil, avocado oil, walnuts, avocados, and olives, which are more stable and less likely to cause inflammation. Plus, they taste better too. The bottom line, menopause increases our body's natural inflammatory state. Eating foods that don't contain processed vegetable oils will help you stay less inflamed and help you control your weight, specifically body fat. 
You might be shocked to find out how many foods contain these types of oils. So the takeaway, be a food label detective. If what you're eating throughout the day has a lot of added sugars or processed vegetable oils in it, try to cut them out entirely or at least significantly. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave it below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date on regular video updates like this.